The next configuration phase for eBGP is to enable a BGP session between the neighbor routers. Each router must be configured to receive routes from its neighbor. In this step, we'll configure each router to receive routes from selected neighbors. We do this by enabling the specific neighbor on our router, in this case R1. Now let's take a look at the routes currently on R1. On R1, we see that it still only has its own routes. This is because the neighbor router has yet to export its connected networks. Now we'll configure R2 to receive routes from its selected neighbor. Now you display the existing routes on R2. As on R1, we see that R2 still also only has its own routes. We did not see anything new in the last view because nothing new was sent by the neighbor router. The last phase of configuring a basic eBGP configuration is to export those networks to BGP neighbors that were not previously seen by that neighbor, in this case the loopback networks. Now the neighbor routers will have some new routes to see. Now we'll have R1 send its additional network to its neighbor via BGP. Now we'll also have R2 send its additional route. Finally, it's time to validate the eBGP configuration. We should see all routes on both routers. On R1, we'll first verify that one route is received from eBGP. The show BGP command shows that one additional route was received via eBGP. Now we'll look at the specific routes received via eBGP. Here we see the route to destination 10.10.30.0 is via peer interface 10.10.20.2 and it is in AS200. Finally, on R1, we'll verify that all three routes are now in its routing table. Note that the destination 10.10.30.0 has been added via eBGP as indicated with the BE. Now we'll do the same verification on R2. Start by verifying that one additional route was received via BGP. Here on R2, you can see that one additional route received via eBGP. Now we'll look at the specific routes received via eBGP. Here we see the route to 10.10.10.0 is accessible via peer interface 10.10.20.1 and is in AS100. Finally, on R2, verify that all three routes are now in its routing table. Here we see that all three routes are now in R2's routing table. Note that the route to 10.10.10.0 is via gateway 10.10.20.1 and the VISP VLAN. We've now completed the basic eBGP configuration between two routers in two different autonomous systems, as indicated in this diagram. R1 can now reach the loopback VLAN on R2, and R2 can reach the loopback VLAN on R1. Now we'll add a second router to AS100 and configure iBGP between the two, as shown in this illustration. iBGP is used to share routing tables for routers in the same autonomous system. Here the routers are both in AS100. We have already done some of the configuration on R1, but we will still need to do more to share routes via iBGP with R3. We will do the complete configuration required for iBGP on R3. Click on R1 to bring up the console window. Since we've already done a lot of the configuration on R1, let's just verify the switch name. Our switch name is R1. We've already deleted the ports from VLAN default during the eBGP setup, 
So now we'll create the additional VLAN for IVGP to connect to R3. Let's create the new VLAN for Router 1 called IBGP underscore VLAN. Remember, we've already created the loopback VLAN on R1 called R1 underscore VLAN underscore LB. Assign the IP address to the new VLAN. Let's take a look at what we've created. You can see VISP and R1 underscore VLAN underscore LB with the correct IP addresses assigned. Now let's add ports to the new VLAN we just created. Enable the port for this new VLAN. We've already enabled the loopback interface on this switch. Since we've already assigned the BGP AS number and router ID during the eBGP configuration, let's just take a second to verify that they are correct. Here you see the router ID, the AS number, and the other information we set when configuring eBGP. Now we'll create another BGP neighbor relationship, this time with R3. Remember to create a new BGP neighbor relationship with R3, it must be the interface on the next switch. Now let's see who are our neighbors. We now have two BGP peers, one eBGP peer and one iBGP peer. Start the IP forwarding and BGP processes before configuring the next switch. Note that the eBGP is established from the previous configuration exercise. Now you'll practice by configuring the third switch, R3, for iBGP operation. Click on R3 to bring up the console window. Since each switch needs basic configuration, let's name this switch R3 to keep things straight. Now delete the default VLAN ports.